This facility has seven optical sorters, which identify the types of plastic each item contains. The soft drip bottles, made of PET, the milk bottles, made of HDPE, and the yogurt and ice cream containers are made of another form of plastic, and separating them is important for recycling. This triangle with the number 1 to 7 inside it stamped onto plastic containers or bottles is part of the plastic identification code. It's not a recycling symbol. Number 1, PET plastic, is one of the more valuable recyclable materials because when it's clear, it's easy to turn it back into another bottle. But first, the coloured PET bottles have to be separated out. The coloured stuff has to get pulled out of the clear stuff, otherwise your clear's not worth anything. At the end of the day, if you run a little bit of green into your clear bottles, you're going to end up with a bottle that's not clear. Something cloudy and ugly. So a green bottle is not going to be turned back into a bottle, but a clear bottle will be turned back into a bottle. Yeah, correct. At this stage, other types of plastic can also contaminate the recycling. One of the really bad contaminants is PVC. PVC creates all sorts of problems downstream in all of these other plastics. And what's PVC? Where do we see that? Pretty much the only product we see in household is the Cotty's Cordial bottle. Cotty's Cordial is PVC. It, is. it means that they can't use it back for food grade material because it's got those chlorides in it. You know, what our preference would be is to just not have it in the stream at all. Why does Cotty's have PVC then? To be honest, don't know. Every other Cordial seems to make it work in PET, but that one is the one thing that creates all sorts of problems down here. Number three, PVC isn't the only thing that's problematic. Packaging made with mixed materials are a nightmare for optical sorters. Liquid paperboard, right? What do you do with that? It's a real problem. It's a little bit of paper, a little bit of plastic, it's a little bit of aluminium. So is this stuff recycled in Australia? So at the moment, we've got nowhere to send it, so that hasn't been a target product. So this just gets taken out of the system? Yeah. Like essentially, before this was banned, we just send this overseas and it's not our problem anymore. Yep. Has the ban meant that we're kind of having to be forced to actually find a market for stuff? That's absolutely the issue. Number five is polypropylene, another commonly used plastic for household products that will often end up in landfill, but not at this MRF. This is heaps of our packaging, isn't it? This is my, my yoga packaging. This is my, my feta. This is my meat tray, my ice cream container. This is heaps of what we have at home. And we've found a great local market for it, so it's a really good success story. Without the bands, nobody would have built the infrastructure in the first place. The bands are a fantastic idea. You know, they are absolutely pushing us and everyone to make higher quality products uh, and to invest locally, and that's what's happening.